Tēnā koutou katoa, ko taku manu he manu huna i te pō, pō kākapō. He manu huna nō ranga ana mai i te tihi o auraki. Kā titero whakararo ki taku whenua tupu, i hoki tika te whenua, i hoki tika te awa e rere tonu nei. Tahuti i taku hairi i te were rua pō. Huri rauna i ngā motu. Kā tau mai kei raro i te maru nui o mauau i tauranga moana. Here, here ki te pau, tuarongo o tōku whare, ki aku pā harakeki e hai. Koe koe ana, te tui, ke te keti ana, te kaka, kuku ana, te kereru. E ngā manu here tuarangi, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Mehe mea, Mā, ka haere te manu hiakai, ki tōpuna whāngai atu ki a ia. O te anō, me whāngai ia ki te ao. Tihei mauri ora. Welcome to the Women and the Economy Forum for 2021. It's wonderful to be here virtually with you all today. I just greeted you in the traditional way here in New Zealand, which is with a mihi, a mihi in Māori. In my mihi, I paid tribute to the land where I grew up in the South Island of New Zealand and the area I now call home in Tauranga, beneath Mount Maunganui. And I welcomed you all who are joining me today from afar so that we can work together for the benefit of our APEC region. While we're not able to host you all in person, it's an exciting opportunity to welcome you all virtually to this important meeting in New Zealand's APEC host year. As Chair, let me begin by acknowledging the expertise and knowledge of my esteemed ministerial colleagues and senior officials from the 21 APEC member economies. I would like to welcome our guests from the APEC Business Advisory Council, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the Pacific Islands Forum and the Pacific Economic Cooperation Council. I am delighted that we will be addressed today by our keynote speaker, Right Honourable Helen Clark, former Prime Minister of New Zealand and former UN Development Programme Administrator, who will share with us her views on the economic outlook for women in the APEC region going forward. We will also be addressed by Rachel Tolele, ABAC Chair 2021, to talk about the part that the private sector is able to play. And Dr Rebecca Starmaria, APEC Executive Director, who will update us on this year's WEF dashboard findings. To you all, I welcome your advice and views as we strive to create conditions that will drive inclusive, effective and enduring economic growth in the APEC region. This year's APEC theme is all about joining, working and growing together. Homie e, hui e, taeki e. Today we join together to advance our efforts on gender equality and women's economic empowerment across our region. We meet at an unprecedented time as the APEC region, and indeed the world, continues to respond to and recover from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been a challenging time for us all and has tested the limits and capacities of our economies in many ways. The pandemic has followed similar employment patterns to economic shocks of the past, with women's well-being and employment disproportionately impacted. We know that much of the essential work has been carried out by women and that they have been crucial to our COVID-19 response as scientists, healthcare professionals, educators and other essential workers. We also know that women often carry out significant unpaid care responsibilities. The impacts of the pandemic risk setting back years of hard-won progress unless we collectively take action. We have a unique opportunity to change the status quo and enable women and girls to fulfil their potential for the benefit of all. The decisions and responses that we make now can lay the foundation for a stronger future for women and girls and a more resilient, inclusive economy. I hope that together we can lift our line of sight to a better future. We know our economies stand to gain substantially from achieving our goals for women and girls, including greater productivity, prosperity and innovation and improved quality of life. 
It is no easy task, but in the wake of the pandemic, gender responsive policies and approaches are critical for effective, inclusive and sustainable growth. Together we can seize the opportunity before us to address long-standing structural barriers to women's full and meaningful participation in the economy. That's why our high-level policy dialogue today is such an important one. I'm really looking forward to hearing from economies about how you are embedding longer-term structural changes to improve women's resilience and participation in the formal economy. In our session today, we will, of course, also move to adopt the Women in Economic Ministerial Statement. I would like to personally acknowledge the efforts all economies have made in developing the statement this year. The statement is ambitious in tone and calls for urgent action to advance gender equality and women's economic empowerment across our region. It prioritises the implementation of the La Serena Roadmap and gender-responsive pandemic recovery measures. It also calls for critical structural changes to create an enabling environment for women's economic participation, including by addressing gender pay gaps and occupational segregation and promoting the transition of women to the formal economy. Other key issues highlighted in the statement include women's representation in trade, the disproportionate share of care work undertaken by women and girls, equal access to digital skill training and financial literacy, and gender-based violence in all its forms. It is truly a consensus statement, and one we can all take pride in. By adopting the statement, we signal a strong commitment to accelerating our efforts for women and girls. Thank you again for being here with us today, virtually today. Nga mihi nui, tēnā koutou katoa. Homie e, hui e, taeki e. Thank you.